Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. In this tutorial, we're going to look at getting started using Metal Flux in Premiere Pro. Flux is a plugin that creates 3D volumetric fractal flames. And now with this new plugin, we can actually do this right inside of Premiere Pro. If you don't own Metal Flux for Premiere Pro, you can always download a free trial of Flux from Metal's website and then follow along with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and jump in Premiere Pro and take a look. All right guys, inside of Premiere Pro, I've got some 360 footage on my timeline. You can see that here. And I can apply the flux effect directly to that footage, or I can also apply it to a piece of blank or black video. And I'll show you how to set that up. Before we do that, let's go ahead and open up the Metal Globe Preview, which we can now do inside of Premiere Pro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to Window, and I'm gonna come down here to Extensions, and I wanna select Metal Globe Preview. And that'll open up this Dockable Globe Preview panel, and I can just go ahead and dock this right down here in Premiere Pro, and just adjust the size of this. And if you don't see it update, just click on it and then click over here on your timeline and drag the current time indicator and that will go ahead and update with your video. Now, one thing I want to address really quickly is you may wonder why you would need the Metal Globe Preview inside of Premiere when you also have the Toggle VR display right here. So I can actually click this and I can view my video in 360. And I can turn it back off, but it's actually very convenient to have the Metal Globe Preview as well because now we can simultaneously look at our video in 360. We can jump into it, look around here, while we're also looking at the Ec rectangular view of our video right here. So it's nice to have this double purpose where you can reference both of them at the same time. You can see it's still very quick, just like it would be with the toggle VR display. So let's go over here and let's go ahead and apply flux to this. So I'm gonna go ahead to the effects panel here and I'm gonna type in flux and you'll see it'll toggle up metal flux. So I'm just gonna apply this to my footage. And once that's been applied, you may see your video go black and you may see the metal globe preview go white. I'll show you how to address that really quickly. So what's happening is off the default for Metal Flux, it's went to a rectilinear frame layout. So I wanna go ahead and change that to be monoscopic like my video is. And something else I definitely recommend doing since we're generating these fractal flames on the fly in here in Premiere Pro, we don't wanna work at full resolution. So I'm gonna come here to my preview and I wanna change this now to be 1 4th. And that's just gonna help us work a lot faster and that's just really gonna affect when we're making our changes and then when it's paused, it'll actually revert back to full resolution depending on your settings in Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and scroll down here to the bottom of these settings in Metal Flux. We're also gonna need to adjust the blending mode. From default, it's set to none. So I'm gonna change this to be normal. I'm gonna apply that to my footage. And after you've made that change, you should see your normal footage pop back up and the Metal Glow preview should look correct. And now if I come up here, we're not gonna see anything with Metal Flux off the default. So a nice way to just preview something is come over here to the presets and I'm just gonna select the solar wind preset here. And now we're gonna see that reflected on our footage in 360. So now I can actually look around and we can see that applied to our footage. And if I wanna change how that looks, I can come down here under blending mode and select one of these other blending modes such as screen. Now we can see that's been applied over top our footage. Now again, this is if we're applying this directly on top of 360 footage. But something else you can do is actually apply this onto blank or black video. So just come over here to create a new item. And when you select that, come down here and select black video. And then go ahead and input in your size. Off the default, it should look at what your size of your sequence is. And this is correct for what I need. And I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. So I'm just gonna drag in this piece of black video. Get my current time indicator over that. I'm gonna apply metal flux again to that. And once that's been applied, again, I need to revert those settings off the default. So I need to change this from rectilinear to monoscopic. And then I need to scroll down here so the Metal Globe Preview will look correct. Change the blending mode from none to normal. And that should revert back to black there. And now if we select one of these presets in here, again, I'll do solar wind just so we can kind of see this reflected. We can now see that reflected in here and I can actually look around in 360. And if I want to, I can double click to jump back outside of the sphere to see that projected as well. So now we've got these fractal flames that are actually 3D and 360 in this case, right here inside of Premiere Pro. I want to show you guys some of the settings that are a little bit different in Premiere than they are in After Effects. First, just to show that this is actually in 3D, let's come over here to the 3D Transform. And I'm going to scroll down here to Volume Rotation. And I'll rotate this on the Y axis and we can actually see now that 3D shape, the fractal flame rotating all inside of Premiere Pro. And again, you want to make sure you have this set at 1 4th resolution and you can see as I leave that pause, it updates to the full resolution. Let's jump back into the spherical view. And again, I'm just gonna rotate that volume again just so we can see that in 360. So it's very cool that we're able to do this with a plugin all inside of Premiere Pro. So if you're more comfortable with Premiere Pro, this is gonna make using Metal Flux a lot more convenient. 
So I'm going to toggle back down the 3D transform. And again, we have some of these other settings up here, such as evolution, X, Y, and Z. And these are loopable options. You can go ahead and scan through here to quickly create loopable animations inside of Premiere Pro. Again, very quickly, just adjusting these. And you can get some really nice looking results without having to keyframe a lot of other settings. The next option we have here is scale. This is a global scale for the entire flux volume. And you can see as I drag and adjust this, it just will change the size. You can kind of see it's getting closer to the 360 camera. And I can look around this just to kind of see what's happening. Next, we have the intensity. This will just adjust the intensity of the overall flux volume, kind of the brightness and the glow and everything like that. And then we have iterations as well. This will change how much detail you get, but again, increasing this higher will increase the render time. So I'm gonna adjust this down to something like six just so we can see what that looks like. And you can see how that kind of changes things up a little bit. And I'm gonna change this now to something like 20 just to push it quite a bit higher. And we're gonna see a lot more detail you can see there. But again, this will increase render time. So you can go ahead and adjust this to taste depending on your project. I'm gonna change it back to the default of 12. And also what's really convenient in Premiere, if you need to reset a setting, just come over here and select the reset button for that particular control. And when I select that, it will go ahead and revert that back. Next, we have the mutations here. We have four different mutations you can select from. This is really kind of the core and the heart of Flux. I'll go ahead and just show you an example of one of these, kind of what it's comprised of. And if I toggle this down, you can see we have this entire host of controls in here. Now, when you first apply Flux, if you don't select a preset, you'll need to come in here and enable each of these mutations yourself to make your own changes to. You can see when I toggle just that one off, how much that changes our preset we're currently working with. So I'm gonna turn that back on. And you can select from a lot of different variations in here. You can see we have linear, spherical, swirl. There's a ton of different options we can select from. I'm just gonna select one of these right here, hyperbolic. We can see how that changes. So I'm gonna change this back to spherical just so we get back to that original preset. And you can change the colors and all these different options from scale to shear and rotation. And I'll go ahead and close back up that mutation. Now let's take a look at one of the main differences between the Flux and Premiere Pro and After Effects, and that is that the camera controls in here, if I go ahead and toggle this down, we now have all of the camera controls we need in Premiere built into the plugin itself. Whereas in After Effects, you can use the camera controls, but you can also use the After Effects 3D camera. But the fact that we have these camera controls now built into the plugin itself allows us to use them seamlessly in Premiere Pro, just like we would have a camera in After Effects, but we now have access to that in Premiere. And you can see we can adjust the camera field of view. We can adjust these stereo options if you're working with stereoscopic footage. You can see I can come up here and I can change this to be stereo over under. And you can see how that's projected here now. And if I come down here, I could adjust some of the stereo options such as the inner pupillary distance, which will adjust kind of the parallax for each of the layers, the top and the bottom. And I can also adjust the stereo disparity fade to really control like what gets faded away the closer it gets to the camera if I'm working with stereo footage. But it's also really convenient if you're working with flat rectilinear footage to use these camera controls. So let's jump over here to an HD sequence I've got. And this is with some other black video. And you can see this is just flat regular HD video with a flux volume. So I'm gonna select that layer. And I'm just gonna come down here to the camera controls. And this is where the field of view is really going to be useful. I can adjust how close I wanna get with the uh, lens basically to the flux volume. You can see as I zoom in or zoom out, and I can go ahead and keyframe any of this if I wanted to, and I can keyframe the camera rotation around the volume itself. As you can see here, kind of where we're looking at the volume from, and also the camera position in X, Y, and Z. As we kind of move through the flux volume. So that's really where the camera controls become the most useful when you're working with flat or rectilinear video and using flux because then it's gonna give you those options to make fine tune adjustments on everything. Let's jump back over to our 360 sequence and I'll just scroll through down to the bottom of the settings here. We have other settings such as symmetry where you can adjust the symmetry of the top and the bottom. Let me change this actually back to be our normal monoscopic video. And we'll see that update over here in the sequence and in our Metal Globe preview. And so you can adjust the symmetry on different axes if you want to. You'll see that reflected there now. So you can create some cool shapes using that. We also have the force field effects. If you want to add a force field or some other distortions into your flux volume, I'll just quickly go through and select a sphere, and we'll see that reflected in here as that shape is applied. 
and you can adjust the shape size. And you can kind of see how that's distorting our flux volume in there. And you can adjust the position of that if you need to. As you can see, as that goes through our flux volume. Also, we have options such as the light controls where you can add in various lights. They'll be grayed off from the default and you can go ahead and enable those. And that'll add a light into your sequence and you can move the position of it around. You can see how that light's moving around right now. Currently, this is in 360. So if I come down here and I look around, we'll see that light right over here. And I can adjust the color of that if I want to very quickly and easily. And other options like the radius and position. Finally, we have options such as opacity and different blending modes we can select from with our flux layer. If you want a deeper dive into the flux settings, I highly recommend checking out the After Effects Getting Started tutorial for flux. We'll do a little bit deeper dive into that, but I want to show you guys the main differences in this tutorial using flux in Premiere Pro. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this getting started tutorial using flux in Premiere Pro. Remember you can always download a free trial of flux from Metal's website. This has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.